Are you ready to boost your confidence when selling so you're able to close more deals? Nikki Roush will show you how to build a foundation of skills and a mindset that creates sales success without feeling pushy or salesy and without fear of rejection. She is a sales strategist and coach with more than 25 years of sales experience and is master certified in neuro-linguistic programming. This is a radically different approach to selling. It's a no sleaze, no slime, and no stress approach to building your business. This is Sales Maven. Here's Nikki. Welcome and thank you for listening to the Sales Maven Show. I'm your host, Nikki Rausch, your own personal sales maven, here to offer you tips, techniques, and strategies to master those sales conversations and the selling process. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about client retention. This is so crucial right now with everything that's going on in our world and for our businesses to really be focused on client retention. Now, before I get into the content of the show, I want to do just a couple quick little shout outs. If you would indulge me, I want to thank people who have been sharing and supporting the podcast and leaving reviews and uh, telling others about it and reaching out to me privately to share your takeaways from an episode. I am so incredibly touched and I feel honored that you are here and that you take time, those extra efforts to go above and beyond to not just listen and subscribe to the show, but to actually write a review or to share it with a friend or to reach out to me personally. I'm just, like I said, very touched. And I just want to read a couple of the reviews that we've gotten so far Uh, there's been some great five-star reviews and people have written amazing things. Thank you so much. Uh, the one I want (laughs) to, I want to share with you today is from Allie, the Allie cat. So Allie, thank you so much for this. The title is become a boss at sales exclamation point. I love it. Says Nikki is a boss at sales and she gives you practical steps and confidence boosting reality checks to help you become a boss at sales too. Selling is serving and there's no shame about it. Jump on this podcast and prepare to get your socks blown off. Thank you so much, Allie. I love that. And I just don't, I want to do one more just really quickly. This is from Peggy Morgans. Thank you so much. Uh, She says it's pure gold, actionable advice, and Nikki is so relatable. Can't wait to listen more. Thank you for listening to begin with. I am so honored. Like I said, Okay, let's talk about client retention. It is one of those things that frankly, regardless of when you're listening to this episode, you should be keeping front of mind for you. Thinking about how are you serving your clients? How are you showing up? And considering, again, with everything that's going on in our world right now with uh, the COVID-19 and the businesses that are having to shut down and people who are having to now be at home and take care of their kids who are no longer in school. I mean, there's just so much going on. And if you're not sure where to focus your attention, my suggestion is on client retention. Because we want to keep the people who are here with us happy. We want to reach out and share with them that we're here to support them. So I'm going to give you a couple ideas and ways to be thinking about your own client retention. Hopefully you already are. And maybe this will spur another kind of opportunity for you. Or also reach out to me and share, what are you doing about client retention? We're talking about this in the Sales Maven Society right now because it's such a crucial time and people are feeling like, should I be selling right now? You know, should I be embarrassed about reaching out to clients because they don't want to hear from me? They don't have money and like all of these things. And one of the things I want to offer right now, anytime you are questioning whether or not you should reach out to somebody because you're worried that they don't have the money to pay you, the mistake that you're making, and it's common, by the way, is what's known as selling from someone else's wallet. And it is detrimental to your mindset and it's detrimental to your business to act as if you know what somebody is willing to invest in or can afford or is willing to pay you right now. So knock it off. (laughs) I mean that kindly, but knock it off. 
Stop trying to sell from someone else's wallet. If you have something of value to offer to your clients right now, reach out and offer it. Don't be afraid of putting out a new offer into the market if it makes sense. And also from a client retention standpoint, the other thing that I would say is what else can you do to serve your clients right now? Is there something you can do that will go above and beyond what you're already doing to ensure that they stay loyal, that they stay with you, that they're going to be here when we all come out of this? What can you do? Some of the things that I've been having a lot of conversations with people about this right now and offering suggestions of things that they could do to serve their clients. I was actually talking to a woman the other day and she was sharing that she was feeling a little hesitant to even reach out to her existing clients and find out what's going on with them because she thought, well, what if they cancel? What if I reach out and they cancel? And my suggestion is, and what I, what I said to her is, reach out, showing up from this place of fear that, oh, I don't want to touch base with this client because they're going to come back and just cancel working with me. That's not a very empowered place for you to be in your business right now. So coming from a place of fear anytime with sales is, oh boy, it's it's a tough one. It's something you want to get out of as quickly as possible. And not to say, I'm not trying to imply that I don't ever have fear or I don't ever question things that I'm doing out in the marketplace. I do, but I push through those because I'm here to serve and I'm here to show up and so are you. So it's okay to reach out to people. So back to the person I was having the conversation with, I was making some suggestions about, okay, so when you reach out, what's the message? And my suggestion is that you talk about some of the extras that you're going to do right now. What are some extra things that you can be doing to really serve these clients that have ongoing contracts with you? And I was offering her a few suggestions and she said, you know what, Nikki, we're actually doing those things right now. We just don't ever tell clients. That was one of those like... (laughs) Like I always have a lot of noises that go off in my head. And this one was like, like an explosion, like, wait, what? Okay. It only counts if people know about it. I talk about the the idea of a favor. Like if you do something above and beyond and the client's not aware of it, it doesn't count. So if you're going to do some things that are above and beyond their normal contract, that there's some extra services that you're doing and providing to your clients right now, let's put it out there to them. Let's share about what these extra things you are doing. And we don't have to comment on the fact that I've been doing them for the last five months. Just say in the next three months or two months or whatever it is, your time frame. Just say, this is, this is, these are the extra services that we're going to provide because we care about you. We're here to support you. And we're going to do everything we can from our side to continue to be of service to you. And so through that conversation, she was really inspired and empowered. And she put out an email to her client base and really clearly laid out these, these extras, this extra service, this above and beyond service. And it was so well received. You know, people are grateful in this moment of like, hey, I appreciate you looking out for me. I appreciate you caring enough to put this out versus just sending out the, here's how we're handling, you know, COVID-19. We've all gotten, I don't know how many emails you got about it, but I think I'm over a hundred now of everybody (laughs) who I have any kind of business interaction with who've sent out these notifications, like be different, do something else. And if you need to put out those notifications, fine. And continue to communicate with your clients. Don't run away. Don't, I I keep getting this image of people becoming like turtles and going into their shells. That is not good for the selling process. It's not good for your business to do this. So let people know what are some other things that you can do. You know, one of the things that I'm doing right now inside the Sales Maven Society, which is my membership group, is whereas before I was doing these live bonuses once a month for my group, now I have something going on live every week so that every week people have the opportunity to engage and that I am here to support them. I care about these people deeply (laughs) and I want to do everything that I can, everything in my power that makes sense 
in ways that I can support them. So not not just showing up weekly, but one of the other things that we instituted right now is that over the next period of time, every single one of my members in the group have been offered the opportunity to put together their own mini training that I will then post in the group and also house inside my training center in a certain place. And those trainings will live as long as the person stays in the Sales Maven Society. Because one of the things we know in there is that a lot of these people need each other's services and they're doing business together. So by giving you an op- giving them an opportunity to put together a training so that, you know, people who are coming in, you know, six months from now or a year from now, that training still is living there. As long as you're a part of the Sales Maven Society, your training will stay there as a way for people to get to know more about you. So that's just one other opportunity, right? That that I'm offering to my group right now. And there's there's a few others that we're doing to really support them. We have a, a theme going, we're calling it a part together. <laughs> And the idea is to continue to just come together as a group and support each other and talk through what's going on in our businesses. So that's my, you know, one of my ways that I'm showing up for my clients right now. What are yours and what can you do? Now, another thing that's happening that clients are talking with me about is their clients' businesses are shut down. So they are not buying right now. So it doesn't make sense to put out an offer to people whose businesses are closed if you're selling to businesses or, you know, depending on what your offer is or what what kind of business you're in, there are people right now that it doesn't make sense to market to. And what I'm suggesting to these clients, and here's what I want to share with you today, is that doesn't mean that you still can't reach out to people, check in with them, see how they're doing, offer to be a resource to them in some way. See if there's something that you can do. And you know, the way that I would frame this as far as language is just to say, hi, how are you? How are things going for you? And the purpose in reaching out is to find out, is there anything that I can do to be a resource to you right now? Or another way for you to say that is, is there even one thing that I might be able to do for you to support you right now? Like ask questions of people. Don't be afraid to touch base with them. Don't be afraid to put out content. Don't not send your newsletter out. People still want to hear from you. And be careful about making assumptions about what people are going to buy and not buy right now. Again, that's selling from someone else's wallet. We're selling to adults they'll decide yes or no. Now, do you need to be cautious in your language? Do you need to be careful? Frankly, always. (laughs) Not just now, but always. You should be careful in your language and you should be thoughtful in the way that you're communicating. So, you know, nothing in in that realm as far as sales has really shifted. So again, the idea behind this episode was to help you think about client retention and ways that you can really serve your clients. Knowing what to say and how to talk with your clients has always been crucial to your sales success. And now more than ever, people are struggling with how to best communicate in a way that is sensitive, that their message is well-received, and that the message gets across effectively. So things are changing. There's no doubt about it. And that means that you're going to be having crucial sales conversations with your existing clients as well as any new prospective clients. Topics that you need to be prepared to talk about are things like retention, pivots to your existing business, those money owed to you conversations, contract renegotiations, new offers and programs that you'll be launching into the marketplace, being able to overcome objections and being able to find solutions to keep your existing clients happy and maintain their business. So being able to confidently and effectively communicate about challenges, concerns, and opportunities with your clients will be the difference between success and failure for many entrepreneurs. And success is the goal. So with that in mind, here is a unique opportunity for a select group of entrepreneurs to join a new coaching program that I am launching on April 14th. 
It's called the Crucial Sales Conversations in Uncertain Times Premier Program. It's a combo program in that you have some private coaching with me, there's some group coaching opportunities, and there is a mastermind component to it. In addition, there will be a guidebook given to these participants. This guidebook is going to be filled with language suggestions around these topics. I'm even going to be sharing my most successful email campaign, the actual emails themselves, because sometimes just having an example is enough to get you started down the road for your own successful launch. So you're invited to join And to find out more information about this program and see if this is the right fit for you right now, please visit yoursalesmaven.com forward slash premier dash program. Again, that's yoursalesmaven.com forward slash premier dash program. You're also welcome to reach out to me privately with any questions. We would love to have you in this group with us. Now back to the show. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about around client retention has to do with what do you do with those clients who are reaching out to you to say, you know, I I need to cancel my service with you or I need to put this on hold for now. What's the way to communicate with those clients? And there's a few ways to do this. One of the one of the things that I'm talking with my clients around right now is do you have a step down offer? And I I call this a downsell. Do you have a downsell for people right now? Because sometimes if you have, let's say you're offering a coaching package, for instance, and somebody reaches out and says, I need to put my coaching package on hold because of this reason or that reason. And again, this is this is something that will serve you regardless of when you're hearing this episode and what's going on in our economy. It's okay to say to them, we can definitely put that on hold if that if that makes sense for you. And or here's another option for you. Give them a way to still work with you in some capacity that's paid. Sometimes just giving people a step down option will work. We just did this inside the group. One of my members had somebody reach out and ask about canceling her membership. And I had suggested this downsell. And she was like, oh, that's brilliant because I'd never thought to offer that to her and give her, you know, yes, I'm going to take some things away, but it is a way to keep this particular client going, like moving forward with me. And then once you kind of know what are what is that thing that people will step down into, then that's something that you can offer to the next client when you have these types of conversations and the one after that and the one after that. So Now, of course, think about your business. Does it even make sense? Are you going to feel any kind of resentment about a downsell? And if so, then I don't recommend that you give it. But it's okay to let people have a step down. As a matter of fact, when I first started the, the very first version of the Sales Maven Society, it was called something else. It was called Sticky Selling Mastery. It was a group coaching program. And people were having, um, we were doing live coaching calls every month. They had access to all of the training content that is still housed inside the training center today. And uh, we were, we were dripping it out to them. So um, they would get like in the first, I don't know, every, every couple days we would open up a new unit that people could go and watch. Like that was the first iteration And what was happening is people would come in, they would stay in the coaching program for a certain period of time. And then some people would say, you know, for whatever reason, I need to leave the program. And that's always disappointing, right? Like we're always disappointed when we lose a client, especially somebody that we know we can really serve and help. And that's when we came up with this idea. I worked with somebody and we came up with this idea of giving people just access to the training center as a downsell. So they they gave up the group coaching program and they gave up some of the private stuff with me, but they still got access to the training center. And really Sales Maven the, or the Sales Maven Society was born out of that. What at the time was this step down has now become the primary membership platform because it's worked really well. And people were saying yes to this step down. And as a matter of fact, it was higher, it was a higher price than it is now. And people were saying yes 
to this down sell. So I want you to get creative in your down sells. What could you do? Sometimes it's just a matter of taking taking a few pieces away or restructuring something in some way and giving that as an offer. It's also when you, the other way to use a down sell is that when you're talking to a prospective client and you have recommended the offer that you know is the great fit for them, like you're the expert, you stand in this place of power and you offer what you know they need. And if they come back to you and say, you know, I've thought about it and I'd like to do it, I just don't have the money to invest in it. It's nice to have that like down sell opportunity and say, well, if you are interested in getting started, here's a way to do that. So there's a lot of advantage to you having some type of a downsell. It doesn't mean that you need to market it, by the way. You don't need to have it up on your website even if, you're, if you don't want like certain people to have access to it. And you can offer it if and when it makes sense to the person that you're in conversation with, that particular client. And I'm not suggesting that you come up with like, 80 different down cells, (laughs) maybe just one or maybe two, but something to have people to have the opportunity to continue to work with you in some way, continue to pay you money to continue to get the support or the service or the product that you provide. And then what happens a lot of times is things change for them. And when they're ready to step back up into a higher paying program or step up into the bigger package with you or whatever, they're already used to paying you money. It's a much easier step up then because you never know what your offers are going to be in six months or a year. I think we're all finding that right now of coming up with some new offers, right? A lot of people are doing pivots in their business right now. There's no reason to just give people like, well, you either stay working with me or you leave. Sometimes it's you stay working with me, you leave, or here's one more other way that we could continue to work together. And I have found this to be in in the years in my business, this to be a very effective way to keep people going. Actually, now that I think about it, (laughs) I talked about how the Sales Maven Society was first born. But if I go back even further, the primary focus of my business for many years was working with my VIP clients. And it was because of my two VIP clients one time where I was in a mastermind with them. And during the mastermind, they both pulled me aside and said, you know, we love being VIP clients with you. And we're just coming up on the end of our program. And we want to stay working with you in some way, but it doesn't really make sense for us to re-up for a full VIP program is there another way that we could work with you? And that's when I came up with this group coaching program offer that they both instantly said yes to. One of them, that was two and a half years ago, maybe almost three now, definitely two and a half years ago. She's still working with me. She's still in the program. So this is why having kind of a step down oftentimes makes sense. So the idea, again, behind this episode today was to really challenge you to be thinking about your offers, your client retention, what are some extras that you might want to offer right now to really support your loyal customers, to keep them loyal, to keep you front of mind? How can you continue to communicate with people and reaching out to them, sending some of those personalized messages to check in to see how they're doing, offer to be a resource? Don't be afraid of asking that question. Like, what's one thing I can do right now to support you? Doesn't mean that you have to do it. Maybe it's too big of an ask, but we'll never know if you don't ask the question. So get out there, reach out to your clients, be touching base with them and find out what can you do right now? Oftentimes people will honestly tell you what it is they need. Again, the examples that I gave around the Sales Maven Society, these all came from clients telling me what they want. And I tend to listen. I mean, I don't tend to. I do listen to my clients and I pivot a lot based on the things that they ask for. As a matter of fact, by the time this episode airs, I'll have already launched it. But I have a new offer coming that's a group coaching program that one of my clients during a call, she was like, this is what I really need from you right now, Nikki. And I was like, great. So I went back, looked at the numbers, looked at the amount of time, Do I have the ability to put it into my schedule right now? And 
you know, within three days, we had the offer launched. So pay attention, reach out to your clients and see what they have to say. They might actually tell you what that what that pivot should be or might tell you what that next offer should be or what that downsell should be. And you won't know if you're not out there communicating with them. All right. I hope you found this episode helpful. <laughs> and I would love to hear from you. What was your takeaway? What did you find to be a value? And one of the ways for us to stay in touch and one of the ways for you to continue to get support from me, for the listeners, I have set up a resource page that you can get access to that includes, there's training up there, there's what my ebook is up there. I have the 17, the list of the 17 buying signals up there. So the full training that's up there is authentic sales conversations that's around prospecting. You might need that right now. There's some script language in there that you probably are going to need for sure. So go get that. And the way to get that is to go to yoursalesmaven.com forward slash maven, lowercase m-a-v-e-n. And that's there for you. Thank you so much for listening. Absolutely appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, please do that. And if you know of somebody who would benefit from hearing this episode, please share it. I am so, so grateful when that happens and just wishing you tons of success. Take care. Thanks for listening to Sales Maven. Visit us online at yoursalesmaven.com slash maven for more resources to boost your confidence and skills.